heel pain is one of the most common complaints among American citizens. In fact, it's estimated that approximately 1 in 10 Americans deal with heel pain. So what is this phenomenon that's caused heel pain to reach epidemic levels? The answer is plantar fasciitis. So what is plantar fasciitis? Well, the simple definition lies in the root of the word. Plantar is Latin for bottom part of your foot, the part that you walk on. Fascia is Latin for fibrous muscle tissue. And itis is Latin for inflammation. So putting that all together, plantar fasciitis is basically inflammation on the bottom part of your foot. To dive a bit deeper, the plantar fascia band is the muscle that connects the heel bone, also known as the calcaneus, to the metatarsal joints. The plantar fascia originates from the heel, then branches out to these metatarsal heads near the toes. The pain of plantar fasciitis can be felt anywhere in the arch of the foot, but it is most commonly felt near the heel bone. This is because a tug-of-war type scenario is created between the five metatarsal heads and the heel bone, and most of the time, five is going to beat one. When this happens, a micro tear is created in the plantar fascia. The really interesting thing about plantar fasciitis is that this micro tear actually heals during you know, times of sleep or other periods of extended rest. So once you start to get up and walking again, this micro tear, which had just healed, is actually retorn. This is why most people feel the pain of plantar fasciitis their first few steps out of bed in the morning or after getting up from long periods of rest. Uh, it's generally a stabbing pain in the arch of the foot, which is normally close to the heel. To determine how or why someone would get plantar fasciitis, we must first look at their foot type. The three main foot types are pronated, supinated, and neutral. A pronated foot type is when the ankles roll in. Now, this in turn forces the knees to go in, the hips to go out, messes with that alignment. Um, and overall, as that ankle rolls in, it forces the arch to collapse. This causes a lot of wear and tear and fatigue in that arch area and ultimately leads to the wearing down of the arch, the wearing down of the plantar fascia, and ultimately causes those micro tears, which is plantar fasciitis. About 80% of people on the planet pronate. So naturally, plantar fasciitis is gonna be most common in pronators. In terms of supination, that ankle is gonna roll out. It's gonna force that knee to go out, that hip to go in. Uh, throwing that alignment off still, like pronation, the difference is that it's gonna force that arch to come up rather than down. And what that does, it causes that arch to be very tight. So when that foot hits the ground, it just means that the foot is not going to be flexing a whole lot. It's not going to be absorbing a whole lot of shock. And for that reason, because that foot is very tight, it's kind of just hitting the ground, not really flexing. And that can cause micro tears and ultimately plantar fasciitis. With the neutral foot type, the ankles are going to be straight. They're not going to be rolling in or out. For that reason, people with neutral foot types are going to have the lowest chance of getting plantar fasciitis. However, they're definitely not immune. So... With neutral foot types, generally the arch is going to be medium to medium high. So similar to somebody with a supinated foot, their arch is going to be on the higher side. And as a result, it's going to be a little bit more tight. It's not going to absorb as much shock as somebody with a pronated foot or a lower arch. And as a result, their foot's kind of hitting the ground, not absorbing a ton of shock. And that's where that micro tear can form, that plantar fasciitis can arise. Demographically speaking, Plantar fasciitis is very common with runners. It's estimated that 22% of runners experience plantar fasciitis. Weight also plays a role, as more weight will put more stress on the plantar fascia and oftentimes cause the arch to flatten out, resulting in the overworking of the plantar fascia band. So overweight and obese people are also more prone to the issue, especially if the weight gain is sudden, which is why pregnant women have a high chance of getting plantar fasciitis. Everyday jobs or occupations that keep people on their feet a lot on hard floors like factory or warehouse workers, can have an increased risk of plantar fasciitis. Podiatrist Elizabeth Kurtz explains that flat, flimsy shoes with no support for either the angle or the arch is also one of the more common causes of plantar fasciitis. Uh, this includes flip-flops and worn-out shoes that have lost their cushioning and support. To further support this claim, podiatrist Michael King says that a lot of people are in pain in the early fall because they've been wearing flip-flops all summer. According to the National Center for Biotechnical Information, estimates show that there are about 1 million patient visits per year regarding plantar fasciitis. It is also estimated to occur in about 10% of the general population as well, with 83% of these patients being working adults between the ages of 25 and 65 years old. 
Plantar fasciitis has reached epidemic levels in the United States, with approximately one in every 10 people dealing with the issue. Now, the problem I have with the plantar fasciitis epidemic is that nobody's really talking about it or doing anything to actively stop it. When a disease or virus becomes widespread, people begin to wear personal protective equipment, quarantine, increase their sanitary precautions. With plantar fasciitis, it's, although it's very common, people have continued to wear unsupportive footwear. They've continued to value style and aesthetics over proper support, cushion, and fit. And overall, they haven't really demonstrated a proper uh, knowledge or awareness on the topic. So what can be done to help treat plantar fasciitis and ultimately put an end to this epidemic? Getting a well-fitting, supportive pair of shoes is a start. Icing the arch of the foot, various stretches, as well as massaging the arch after activity are all some of the more simple remedies. Different accessories like compression socks, foot rollers, and foot massagers can help ease and prevent pain. If these measures do not work, injections, steroids, shockwave therapy, acupuncture, surgery, and some more complicated remedies are also options. Surgery is needed in about 5% of cases, but it's not 100% effective. Probably the most common stretch for plantar fasciitis is this one right here. So you're going to want to take a towel, a t-shirt, anything that can be placed right behind these five metatarsal heads. Put it right there, get that knee straight and just pull very gently. So what this is doing, it's loosening up that calf muscle, it's loosening up that Achilles muscle, and as well as that plantar fascia, of course. So those three muscle groups are gonna work together. We want those all to be very loose so that our arch is not tight and that plantar fasciitis cannot arise. For this next one, you're gonna wanna go up on any step or elevated surface, come down slightly, bring those heels to the ground, then come back up. So what that's gonna do, it's gonna put that stretch in the calf and in that plantar fascia band, again, loosening up those muscle groups. So this last remedy, it's gonna be my personal favorite. You're gonna to wanna to place a baseball, tennis ball, lacrosse ball, any type of small ball underneath the foot and just go in a circular motion with that foot. And what this is gonna do, it's just gonna alleviate that tension on the plantar fascia band. For somebody that has plantar fasciitis, this should be done regularly before and after activity. For somebody that doesn't, still a very good exercise that can be done to prevent plantar fasciitis either before or after activity. One of the most common remedies is the use of an insert or orthotic. And the idea with these guys, it's going to depend on how high your arch is. So for example, if you have a very low arch, that means that your arch is constantly flexing, it's constantly collapsing. And for that reason, it's causing a lot of wear and tear in that arch area. That's how somebody with a low arch would get plantar fasciitis. The idea with this insert, it's basically going to just keep that arch propped up. So it's going to prevent it from collapsing downward. It's going to keep that arch straight, preventing that wear and tear. It's also going to in turn... Just keep that ankle alignment a little bit straighter, which in turn, again, is going to keep that knee straight, that hip straight. It's going to keep that whole body alignment in better shape, um, as well as just keeping that arch elevated, preventing that wear and tear. That's the idea with somebody with a low arch. For somebody with a higher arch, again, because they have a higher arch, it just means that that gap between the heel and the balls of your feet is very large. So what this is going to do, it's going to fill that gap. It's going to take the weight off of the heel, off of the balls of the feet, spread out that pressure as well as relieve that tension off of the plantar fascia band. So again, with a higher arch, that plantar fascia band is just going to be very tight. That's how somebody would get that micro tear in their arch, which is plantar fasciitis. So what this is going to do, it's going to relieve that tension off the plantar fascia band. It's going to fill that gap, even out the pressure across the whole foot, and hopefully prevent plantar fasciitis. To learn a bit more about how shoes, orthotics, and other products can help benefit people in the realm of plantar fasciitis, I took a trip down to New Balance and Avon to interview a couple of the guys and learn how their products are actively working to benefit people and put an end to this plantar fasciitis epidemic. I'm joined here with Matt Lundy, assistant manager here at New Balance and Avon. Matt, how are you doing today? Doing great, Daniel. How about you? Doing awesome. Got a couple questions here for you today. Uh, number one, how often do you see plantar fasciitis on a daily basis? I mean, I'd say every day. Um, I've been here for around three years and I can't say there's been a day where someone didn't come in with plantar fasciitis. Mm -hmm. and it's really one of those injuries that's taken over. Absolutely. And why do you think this injury has reached epidemic levels in the United States? I think it's just uh, a lack of awareness on the topic. Right, right. Um, I mean, whether you're an athlete or um, just a regular person, I mean, you're susceptible to it. Mm -hmm. um, most people are under the belief that you can just go to a store, pick out a shoe that you like aesthetically, and as long as it feels okay on your foot, you're going to be taken care of. Unfortunately, it's just not the case. How do you go about treating the issue? I'm sure there's a lot of factors that go into it. Of but, course. You know, 
just simplifying it, how do you think yeah. you would treat it? So like you said, I mean, it's really going to vary uh, depending on the severity of the case mm -hmm. um, and a person's foot type. Right. But most commonly, I mean, just good supportive sneakers is going to go a long way, um, comboed with maybe like an arch support. There's certain stretches, you know, physical therapy um, can help as well. Mm -hmm. Matt Lundy, I appreciate the time. Of course, anytime. I'm joined here alongside Devin Morgan, general manager here at New Balance and Avon. Just here to ask you a couple questions, you know, about your store regarding the issue of plantar fasciitis. Number one, what do you think the most common issue is that you see in this store? So by far it's plantar fasciitis. We're, you know, kind of co-opted with a lot of local podiatrists, orthopedic doctors, um, physical therapists, and it's just a common issue that's really not well spoken about. And a lot of people don't know about it, mm -hmm. but we see it every day. How do you feel like your store has adjusted to this issue and how have you guys really adapted to become really a leader in treating the issue? So for us, this is, um, this is a key topic we train on with everyone who comes in here. Um, because of our medical background, our owner is a pedorthist, we work on custom orthotics, we modify shoes. New Balance is a great product, but they make different shoes for different foot types. So our goal is really to look at the foot type, see exactly what would have caused the issue, and then find the appropriate solution based on what the feet are like. Mm -hmm. And what do you feel like some of the biggest misconceptions are with plantar fasciitis? So it can be pretty easily misdiagnosed. Um, you know, to the general person, heel pain could be called plantar fasciitis. If you do a quick Google search or you go on WebMD and don't read too far yeah. into it. <laughs> um, it's really micro tears in the muscle tissue in the arch. And given all of our bodies are created differently, there's different reasons we're all gonna get it. But if you could understand that and you could you know, get the proper products that are gonna work toward that, mm -hmm. the issue's a non-issue. So let's say somebody walks into the store, right? They say they have plantar fasciitis. What's step one? So step one, we really wanna get to the root of that and see if that's actually the case or if you know maybe they have misdiagnosed it. Um, so there are kind of some telltale symptoms. So our first thing is to interview the customer and just make sure we're kind of on the same wavelength there. We do know it is that issue. And from there, we use kind of like a 3D mapping technology and that looks at ankle alignment, it looks at arch height, and we're really looking at the biomechanical aspect of the foot and seeing what caused that injury in the first place. So we know then how to treat it. You say scan, right? Yeah, so we have kind of a computer technology. It's it's pretty technical. So um, it's made by four different companies. The front part of it is made in Sweden. It's basically like a 3D mapping technology. The back is kind of a, a gate sensor plate that reads pressure points as you walk so you can see how flexible the arch is, things like that. And um, we use it really to look in depth at what the foot type's like so then we could pick out the proper footwear to associate with it and we could also recommend the proper type of arch support that's going to alleviate it but not bother it more. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Can, can I give this a shot? Yeah, absolutely. It takes about 10 seconds, so it's pretty quick. Let's right. do it. Yeah, let's do it. Awesome. So I just stand up on here? Yeah, so first I'm going to have you take off your shoes. Okay. And then the machine itself, it likes your pant legs roughly around the middle of your cap. That's perfect. Go birds. Yeah. And then <laughs> I'm going to have you pretty much just stand in those two white boxes up top, wherever you're most comfortable up in there. It's good here? Yeah, that's perfect. So this will take about 10 seconds, and this is the 3D mapping technology I was talking about. So really we're using this to look at your ankle alignment and how it relates to your knees, your hips, your back. Mm -hmm. And then we're looking at your arch height to determine how tight or flexible it is. And that's gonna be more conditional on like the type of cushioning you need in your shoe. I wanna get a quick look at your ankles from the heel. And let me ask Danny, have you ever had plantar fasciitis? Do you have any aches or pains, anything that bothers you? I, I have not had plantar fasciitis. Good. Well, actually, no, I have. It's not. Nothing too severe. I, I think I had it uh, very minimally, but it was one of those things, you know, you just kind of wake up in the morning, it hurts, just walk it off a couple steps, you know. But. Yeah, I mean, it, it is something that could happen to any one of us. I do want to tell you a little bit about your foot type. So you could step off here. Um, and we want to look at this together. So the first thing we address is ankle alignment. So we're actually looking at the rear foot and kind of following this Achilles tendon. And our goal there, we just want to see how it really aligns with the knee, hip, and back. For the most part, your alignment's really, really good. Mm -hmm. So your right side, it's almost dead straight, very, very linear. So I can tell alignment's good there. The left side, you could see this really light C shape. Right. So that is called pronation. Um, what that means is your postibial tendon that holds up the inside of your ankle, it's flexible enough for your ankle to actually roll inward. 
and that allows your arch to flex a little to absorb shock. Mm -hmm. So it has the benefit of absorbing impact, but I'd say in footwear, just get something strong enough to kind of reinforce that and keep it from shifting that knee inward. So, yeah, I mean, through my research, you know, I've researched these terms, pronation, whatever, supination. Mm -hmm. um, how would somebody with each of these, because uh, the foot types are slightly different, how would somebody with each foot type kind of get the plantar fasciitis? So, in plantar fasciitis, it's a micro tear in the muscle tissue in the arch. In a case like this, if we look at arch height, you'll notice both arches are still on the very high side. Um, and that's just structurally really common with a straight ankle alignment or one that supinates or rolls out. So the reason for that, they're kind of connective tissue, like their muscles, tendons, ligaments are tighter. Mm -hmm. um, so their benefit is kind of everything tracks well, but these feet do not like to flex to absorb shock. Gotcha. Your arch is a shock absorber, so it likes to move when you hit things. Given this muscle band or the plantar fascia band is so tight, if you don't have enough cushion, you just pull it. Um, the inverse is also true. So if you have a foot type and you know this clearly isn't, but if the ankle rolls in pretty severely and the arch is more flexible, it's constantly moving to absorb shock. That's gonna absorb impact really well. Yeah. But if we talk about wear and tear over time, over usage is a way you could pull it too. Mm -hmm. So you know it happens for different reasons. For your foot type, I'd say it's much more to do with cushioning and shock absorption. If right. you could get something to absorb the shock and use your arch to land on, that helps. Mm -hmm. um, for a more flexible foot, you're gonna need that structure just to keep yeah. over usage from being the factor. Yeah, okay, interesting. So Devin, you mentioned that different shoes, different products are gonna benefit different people, depending on the foot type, heel from plantar fasciitis. How would certain shoes here, you know, help different people? So New Balance actually builds their different shoes for different shapes of feet and different body lengths. Um, every foot type gets plantar fasciitis for a slightly different reason. Uh, I'm going to use one of these shoes just as kind of like an example, but this is called the stability shoe. We have other shoes like this, kind of varying cushion qualities, but it has a medial posting, which is basically a denser wedge of foam on the inner wall of the shoe. So someone who has a more flexible ankle and arch that like to cave in, basically they have a more intense material to pick up the foot and hold it in a better position to heal. That limits the range of motion for the plantar fascia band and the arch to pull side to side. So without having an arch built into the shoe, this is still supporting that muscle in the arch and keeping it from pulling side to side. Now that's for a more flexible ankle alignment and arch height. Um, the inverse of that is true. Someone who's really straight ankled or their ankles roll out, like supinated or neutral, they usually get that injury because their foot's super tight. So we have neutral cushion shoes, which are designed for a really high arch foot type. Still no arch built in because they can't build it to match every foot type. But what they do have is extra cushioning to absorb shock, knowing that plantar fascia band, the muscle in the arch, is super tight. So if they don't have adequate cushion, their arch tries to kind of flex and fire, and that's where they're gonna get that injury. Mm -hmm. and how about inserts? How would an insert benefit different people depending on the foot type? I know you guys have them. So kind of inserts, if, if you wanna take a look right over here, this is just a small array of what we have. Um, we have about 30 variations on these, so there are a lot of different arch heights. The way we work into inserts, the shoes are kind of your platform that makes everything work for body alignment and they focus on whatever cushion is gonna absorb the shock most for that injury. Um, when we talk about inserts, we use this computer here to really size it exactly to the arch height. So we wanna make sure it fits that contour really well. If you're pushing too much on the arch, for example, you're actually pulling the plantar fascia the other way. It's actually gonna make the injury worse. And if you have a gap between the arch and the insert, it's basically still flexing into that. You're still having that same kind of tearing go on every day, whether it's a minimal gap or a big gap. So this is sized exactly to arch height and to the size of the foot. And this is something, realistically, you could put in any shoe. Um, ideally, we want it in a strong foundation like the shoes we sell here. So we make sure the two kind of work together and that's gonna give it the most support. But this, if we could fill in for the arch, basically it's supporting that muscle and anytime it wants to flex in the course of a day, it's keeping it in a solid position where it's gonna be allowed to heal. It's, you know, if you consult with a podiatrist, being barefoot's the worst for it. Um, anything where you're not supporting that muscle tissue in the arch, probably gonna end up with that pain again. And then how about some of these more like random products? Again, I mentioned it before, um, during when we were in the back, a lot of things in the store have mentioned plantar fasciitis. How about something like this? You know, what's the difference between something like this and just like a regular sock? So these are really, really interesting. Um, OS First and 
We, we do a lot with these guys. We have kind of diabetic friendly compression. This is a more intensive compression sleeve. So if you look at the actual dynamic of it, you're gonna see a different kind of thread pattern. So where it's really tightly woven, it's pretty much right in front of the heel and at the very top of the heel. So that's where the Achilles is gonna feed into the calcaneus and that's where the plantar fascia, that muscle in the arch feeds into the calcaneus. So they're actually making tighter spots to support that muscle tissue in the arch. Yeah. And then for various tendons, like the you know, Achilles tendon in this case, um, compression means it's actually circulating blood back to the heart. So when you get a compression, you wanna wear this ideally when you're active because your blood moves differently that way. But circulating black, back to the heart means that you're gonna get more oxygen in it. So more oxygenated blood, when it returns to the feet, it, it's proven to basically heal muscle tissue quicker or if you have a tendonitis, it's gonna heal that better too. Um, so recovery time's a lot less. It's also gonna help even for just like an athlete who you know, wants lactic acid to not build up, so cramping fatigue is less common. But for an injury like that, this is something maybe someone might wear around the house yeah. with a slipper with an arch support, stuff like that. Um, you know, breaking the habit of being barefoot, it's pretty hard for a lot Just of kind us. of an extra thing. Yeah, just to wear. have, yeah. or you know, maybe they've been dealing with that injury for years, they right. just want to be comfortable. This will get them on the road faster to recovery. Got so it. they could do that. The one adjacent to it, they make the same thing for nighttime too. So they, they make various things for nighttime, but the goal is to keep it stretched at night. That injury is a micro tear in the muscle tissue. So think of almost like a, a braided rope. If you cut it with a knife, you have all these little fibers that fray. That's kind of like the muscle in your arch. So overnight, when your arch sits limp and your foot's limp, it heals tight. You step out in the morning and re-tear every day. Mm -hmm. So they have the Strasburg sock that keeps it at a 90 degree angle. Basically you sleep in this, or if you're sitting watching TV, you know, you sit there and you keep this on and it keeps it stretched. So yeah. it heals in that stretch position. This is a decompression sock. It's the inverse of this guy right here. So knowing your blood moves differently when you're laying down, it's still built to kind of support things. It's not as aggressive as this, but it's still stabilizing. It's still right. gonna help. I wanna give a huge thank you to the guys at New Balance and Avon for sharing their time and knowledge with me. I really appreciate it. To wrap things up, Plantar fasciitis is a huge issue in the United States. It's important that everybody knows what plantar fasciitis is, how to deal with it, and how to prevent it from even occurring in the first place. I thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great day.